Hi everyone, Armored Pants here and I have another review for you in the Russian line, the Tier 6 Heavy, the KV-1S and as always we have a complete guide for you and as always we will look at the tech spec in Blitzhanger first. But before we do that I would like to draw your attention to a very important fact about this tank and that is that it does not play like the KV-1. The KV-1S is a Russian Heavy, it's in the same line, it's a Tier 6 after the Tier 5 KV-1 but unfortunately it plays quite differently. This is in fact what we've called before a Hevium. Um, uh, it is, plays like a heavy, a cross between a heavy and a medium, and it has a massive boomstick of a gun. A 122mm gun, it is massive, does massive damage for its tier. But of course it has some drawbacks in that the um, handling on this tank is patchy to say the least. The other major drawback about this uh, gun is that it has a massive reload time of almost 18 seconds even with gun rubber. Now there are our alternative guns as you'll see there's a, a 75 and an 85 millimeter gun. Unfortunately when you look at the pen numbers of those guns compared to the bigger gun um, they don't pen very well and you'll get a lot of bounces particularly against heavies in tier 6 um, and uh, against and if you're up tiered against heavies in tier 7 um, you're going to really struggle. But the big gun is awesome. Um, and it's really good and actually a lot of tanks are very scared of you because um, you have massive penetration and can do massive damage and your HE rounds will go through all light and most medium tanks and you can one shot them. Therefore they have, um, you're, quite, you're a big scary guy. Not quite as scary as a KV-2 but you're a big scary guy with this gun and it's needed for the pen because the pen on the lower tier guns on this tank are, is pretty abysmal especially for a heavy tank. So, I believe you need to use the big gun, and of course the big gun is lots of fun. As I said, the, um, the pen on it is excellent, but the handling is patchy. And what I mean by that is you'll get go shots, shots that don't pen, etc. So you need to really aim it carefully, but even then you'll still get a few misses and bounces and things, and you won't really know why. Um, but um, we can compensate that a bit by using supercharge, get that muzzle velocity up over 1000 meters per second. We're going to use a refined gun to uh, reduce the penetration loss over distance. As you can see, it has um, 8 degrees of gun depression, 25 degrees of elevation. And that 25 degrees of elevation is quite handy. And by the way, you will see in the game just how handy that is. In the game we're going to look at, you will see one shot where the gun elevation really comes into play. Now, going back to what I said about it not playing like the KV-1. The main difference is that the KV-1 has a good armor all around. This does not. It will side scrape, as you can see here. There's excellent relative armor numbers on the side, getting way up there into the red numbers as you look on the top left-hand corner of your screen. However, if we look at the front of this tank, you will see that it has very little armor, except from the joining plate between the lower plate and the slant plate to the turret. And the armor is pretty weak. And that's unlike the KV-1. When you're playing the KV-1, it has almost troll armor. This has weak frontal armor. The lower plate is like paper. Even light tanks will pen you front on. Forget about mediums and heavies, that just goes straight through. But even light tanks, even with normal AP rounds, will go through you. So that is a problem. And you've played the KV-1, you're used to that, getting bounces frontally, side on, everywhere. And this won't. And if you play the same type of gameplay as you play in the KV-1, you'll probably not do well in this tank. As you can see, the tracks are exposed, so I would recommend using two repair kits. I always use two repair kits anyway. I don't like being paramatracked. It's the worst thing that can happen to you in the game. These are exposed. Uh, you can't move into cover, etc. So I always use two repair kits, but that's just my own personal preference. Um, this tank, by the way, is very fast, so you don't need to have the engine accelerator. It's one of the things about this tank, and why I said it's more like a Hevium. If we look here, this is now the optimal firing position for this tank. You're side scraping, but you do need to keep that front plate in cover. If you do front plate in cover, side scrape like this, show the turret, which is pretty strong. This is more or less the optimal firing position for this tank, but do keep that lower plate covered because it is vulnerable. When we see exactly what I'm talking about here, this is not a frontal tank, it is not for front line. Its frontal armor is way too weak. You can go hull down with it, etc., but it doesn't have fantastic gun depression. Eight degrees is not great for a hull down tank. For a heavy tank, it's not bad, but if you want to play hull down, it's not so good. So side scraping, um, but keeping your lower plate covered, is good 
Um, you can see here that it says that it does not really good at anything, but that's not true. It is good. It is a fast tank. You can get into interesting positions in it. Um, that gun is scary. It will scare away a lot of people. And you can do lots of damage. It takes some really beautiful, rewarding, satisfying shots in it. And you'll see some of those in this game we're going to look at. If you look at the historical reference, this is an actual tank. It fought on all fronts um, during the Second World War and Eastern Front. And therefore, historically, a very interesting tank. In fact, you could say a World War II legend like the KV-1 and the T-34 itself. And um, really good performing Russian tank during the war. Um, but as a heavy tank, if you play it as a classical heavy tank here uh, in Blitz, you won't do very well, I believe. You need to play it more like a Hevium, uh, use its speed and its agility to get around the map, to get into positions and then use that gun to bring that massive firepower onto the enemy. Now, some players uh, don't like the bigger gun, but to my mind, there's no point playing this tank unless you're playing the big gun on it. Otherwise, just play something else with it. 75 or 85 millimeter gun. The whole beauty of this KV-1S in tier 6 is that massive gun because it's lots of fun. But again, guys that girls, that's just my own personal opinion and um, you know that's what I always do in this uh, reviews. I just give you my personal opinion and experience. As always you need to make up your own mind. Now here we are and um, I've decided to go for A. As you can see um, I my heavy tank, um, we're up to here, here. My heavy tank is fast. I'm going to get into position here. I've done some spotting here. Um, now, um, I think I've done the right thing in this game. I've come to scout out, but not necessarily capture A. Um, but the problem is that um, while the AMX joins me initially, he then decides to go off and leaves me on my own. And you'll see I get rushed then. And actually, the enemy team does the right thing. Um, if you see a tank that's isolated and you're all at one position, by the way, this is what I mean about the gun. You see there that shot onto the FV there. Really lovely shot, big alpha roll. But again, you see now I have a really long reload, right? Really long reload. I have no idea what the AMX is firing at the FE. He did like single digit damage onto him. Now, look at that shot there. That is exactly the same shot that I took earlier, right? Exactly the same shot, to exactly the same position of the same tank, carbon copy, yet that one does not go through. And this is what I mean about the patchy gun handling. Those two shots are almost identical. That's why I slowed it down for instant replay. Um, but you saw that uh, one went through and the other one didn't. Um, this one I missed myself. I was drawing back into cover, so that my own, that's my own fa shot and fault. But the, first, the, the previous two shots we looked at were almost identical, right? Yeah, one goes through and the other doesn't. And this is what I mean about the, the patchy handling on the tank. And of course, when you've got such a long reload, that patchy handling is really a drawback. And you need to really take allowance of that when you're playing this tank. Now, as I said, now I'm in trouble, right? Because um, the enemy see that I am isolated and they do the right thing, they push onto me. And you should always do that when you see an isolated tank. So the FV does the right thing here. He doesn't bother to try to capture. He just comes around to take me out of the game. I put one round into him here and now I need to get out of there. I used the speed of the tank, but I get caught on the hill. Um, I'm just trying to look at too many different enemies at the same time. I got a massive round there, and look at this. I should have been dead there, but I bounced that somehow. There's no skill involved there. That is blind luck. That is RNG, random number generation. That would have taken me out. But I get away. The FE comes to get the kill. He's desperate for it, but he takes a massive round, and now he thinks twice about it. So here I am now. Um, I've managed to escape. I managed to conserve myself, keep myself in the gun. I am a one shot for everything on their team. So I decided to try to get some XP by uh, capping. But now look at this. I look up and I see that this KV-3 is over the cliff. What does that mean? Well, it means that the bottom of his tank is exposed and the bottom of the tank has little or no armor on it. So I line him up and pop. And that's what that gun can do. Look at this beautiful ammo rack shot. Now, I can't tell you I was aiming for the ammo rack. Of course I wasn't. How could I possibly aim for the ammo rack when I went for a blind shot? But I did know that the underside of his tank was sticking up. The bottom of his tank has little or no armor. So I know that if I put a round through there, it's going to do a lot of damage. Set him on fire. And of course, I got the ammo rack. And that's what I mean also about the elevation on that gun. 25 degrees of elevation allowed that shot to be possible. And there's a massive alpha roll. Now it was a lucky shot, but you make your own luck. And um, you saw 
quite clearly that I knew what I was doing when I fired. I couldn't of course predict the ammo rack because it was a blind shot, but I knew I was going to do lots of damage. So in one way a lucky shot, but another way I made my own luck there. Now I know where they are, there's three of them left, we've kind of turned this game around a bit. Um, and that shot on the KB3 was a big part in that, taking out one shot their um, main battle attack. And now I decide to go on attack. I know I'm a one shot for everything up there, um, even the FV with his low alpha rolls, but I'm a one shot for everything up there. But I decide I'm going to play, take, play my luck and see what I can do. And if I get another kill, why not? I get another two kills. Um, so I just throw caution to the wind, why not? So I come up around and you can see now there's my tormentor from earlier on. And I get the last laugh on him, poor uh, FV. Um, he was doing the right thing throughout mostly, but um, it didn't work out for me in the end. Now I hit the adrenaline, trying to get a reload, uh, see if I can get another shot in before the end. KV2 is the preoccupied with the tanks over in front. Uh, so I come up on him, take my time. He spots me now, he's trying to get a shot on me. I bam, get another kill. And I thought I might just get away, but no, I took one step too far and the IS gets me. But I think when you consider I was on a, I was a one shot for the last part of the game, I think it did pretty well and um, managed to clean up well for my team and get us to win. And actually this game then resulted in a mastery badge for me, which I was very, very happy with. Particularly as I was up tiered, particularly as I kind of got isolated and got pushed onto, had a lucky escape. Um, so all of those things I think, um, and of course that shot at the KV3, which was a thing of beauty. As I said, a little bit of luck involved, but kind of planned luck, if that makes any sense. Um, but when you, that's the thing about this gun, though. When you make shots like that, it's such a great feeling of satisfaction. And that's why I believe you should run with the 122mm gun and not the smaller guns. Because despite its patchy handling, despite the fact that it doesn't always go through and you get ghost shots, etc., when it connects, it is a thing of beauty and really satisfying. So anyway, let's have a quick recap. This is not a classic heavy tank because it's at front on, its armor is very weak and it's particularly um, difficult to play them because it's completely different to the KV-1 which you've played before it. It's quick, it's well armored at the sides, so therefore as I say it's probably best described as a hevium because it is quite mobile too. Gets around the map pretty well. Side scraping angling it can do all day and they are skills you will have from your KV-1 but of course you do need to protect that lower plate. Um, it does not have the front on armor that the KV-1 has. It's a big, big gun, as we saw, capable of amazing things, but the patchy handling, as you also saw in the game, but the alpha rolls are awesome, and it's great fun when it works. Great pen. Remember to load up HE. You're going to go through all light tanks and a lot of medium tanks as well. Um, so keep that loaded up has really slow reload, almost 18 seconds, so you really need to keep in mind that aiming is maiming and make those shots count. But even when you do, you saw two identical shots in that game, one went through and the other one didn't. No real explanation. Uh, use supercharge and refined gun, you need that to uh, maximize your chance of penning, especially over distance. Even with supercharge, the muzzle velocity is just over 1000 meters per second. So use both of those. Um, if you haven't already, I hope you have it. If you haven't already, please watch the Heavy Tank Guy, which is on channel. All the essential playing a Heavy Tank are in there, and I think it's really good for you to watch. Plus, there's a side scraping guide as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. All that's left for me to say is uh, cheers, mush, and uh, pants off.